You'll have to excuse my voice in this video. I was taking my Gen X pills this morning. Not my Boomer pills, because Gen X and Boomers are two completely separate things. I would say that Gen Z and Millennials are misusing it to taunt Gen X, but I, I actually don't think they know the difference. <laughs> One of my Gen X pills, I think it went down the wrong tube, so to speak, so... <clears throat> now the uh, area that uh, the entrance to my lungs has a high saturation of um, blood pre pressure medication dissolved into it. All right, so uh, one of my viewers sent this in. He asked me if I wanted a Super Nintendo that's damaged. I said, sure. And something with like lines on the screen. I already have a Super Nintendo. I have a washing machine. Well, this one looks really... Oh, no, it's not blue, it's just the, the bubble cap is blue. <sighs> yeah, so maybe we'll do a repair video on this in the future. Um, yeah, maybe I could sell it or give it to a friend. I, I already have one. Oh, what's this? Magna deal? What is this? Some sort of kit? Uh, I don't know what this is. It's got some sort of integrated circuit on it. Hmm. Oh, what's this? Oh, well, Ario Speedwagon tape. That's super useful. I could put it on one of my tape recorders that I got from Goodwill. Oh, sweet! A micro cassette recorder. <laughs> nice. Oh, and it's a Sony. Shoot. I used to have one of these when I was like in high school. I don't know. I don't know where the tapes went. Why is Ben making a video if his voice, voice is messed up? It's because I don't care. Oh, it's a classic Texas Instruments calculator with one of those LED, like, segmented displays. This must be the power brick for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, it looks right. More than meets... Oh, it looks like an old Palm Pilot. Oh, is, is that a micro cassette in there? Do I spy a micro cassette? It is! <laughs> this reminds me of who's that guy in Transformers? Soundwave? And you'd have, yeah, Soundwave, and you'd have the tapes come out of him, and the tapes would transform into like creatures. Oh, yeah, it's an old Palm Pilot. Oh, this is an old one. <laughs> Mr. Clinton, what do you think of Ross Perot's pie charts? Boy, well, those, those pie charts aren't as cool as my saxophone. Feels like a reproduction nest controller oh it's a usb nest controller that's kind of cool <clears throat> so i believe what this is this is a game gear and this person wants me to do an lcd swap on the screen now this is a pretty uh popular practice these days i know a lot of the benheck.com forum people were doing it they'd always do it at mgc you remember that bring in like your sega nomad and they swap the screen while you wait I still have dreams about conventions. It's like, oh man, I clearly subconsciously miss them. Hmm, okay, well, what do we have here? Oh, interesting. Oh, they made their own little solution. How cute. McWee McWill LCD. Looks like he's got um, an FPGA and then RAM. So they're probably using the RAM to buffer or double buffer the image, and the FPGA converts the RGB analog into a digital signal for the screen. Let's see what's inside. Wow, $3! Oh, that's so cool. See, it makes sense. So you've got the money here, and then about 25% of it's missing. Hello again and thanks again. So this is my Game Gear. It's from Japan and takes a Sega Genesis AC adapter instead of a Game Gear adapter like ours. So the AC jack is looking for 9 volts DC 1.2 amps. Well, that's nice. Everything that came with the Mick Will kit is in the pockets. All it came with was a screen and an RGB VGA connector. Also new buttons. If they seem, spelled seem incorrectly, too sloppy and cheap feeling, don't bother with them. I'm going to put some cash in the box. I guess that's what that $100 or $75 bill was, it should cover return postage. Let me know what I owe you in payment. Oh, that I don't care. I, I do this stuff for free, as long as I can make a video about it. 
and I would be honored if you would sign it, but don't feel that you have to. Well, I have magic markers, so. Oh, it's probably because the uh, new screen is not the same as the old one. Oh, this is a interesting looking Game Gear. It's got the quintessential Game Gear game, Sonic 2. Well, the Game Gear was just a miniaturized master system. And if it's Japanese, that means it would have been the NTSC um, 60 Hertz uh, master system. So this should basically run like an American unit. Video game history tends to get what I like to call Nintendo washed. You know, instead of whitewashing history, you Nintendo wash it. Also Apple washed, not Apple watched, Apple washed. Um, the Game Gear was actually quite successful. It was the best-selling non-Nintendo handheld by a long shot until the PlayStation Portable came out, which was also very successful. <laughs> and the nominees for Best Picture are Sonic the Hedgehog. <sighs> oh, I guess it'd be all virtual now. Bad Boys for Life. <sighs> Birds of Prey. <sighs> And onward! And then Sonic wins, and then they like CGI a Sonic onto the stage, even though the stage is empty, and then Neil Patrick Harris is like wearing a mask. I don't you know, I don't remember I don't remember it being in two sections like this. Well those connectors should remove pretty easily. This is the part we're actually worried about. And if you notice there's a big uh, CFL, compact fluorescent lamp and a reflector, and that's what provides the backlight for the screen. I actually commented on a Lewis Rossman video just this morning while I was choking on pills. Well, I was literally choking down pills. Um, about uh, repairability, and a big thing that's changed over the years is they use as few connectors as possible. Uh, we actually just ran into this with our uh, new pinball controller and the uh, light, or the LED segmented, the, the LED segment chains that go into it. Connectors are very expensive. They're like one of the most expensive things in a controller. Um, <clears throat> you've probably seen me, uh, you know, I do my Xbox, uh, Xbox controller mods for persons with disabilities. Um, like those controllers. So the Xbox One original controller, 2013, they split the PCB into two halves to make the D-pad better, which is good. But that meant there needed to be uh, four connectors, two on one side, two on the other, so two male, two female, uh, to basically connect the halves together. And what they actually did in the 2016 model, the uh, Xbox One S controller, that's the one where they added Bluetooth, they actually, um, they added an uh, I squared C IO expander on the secondary board to handle like the buttons. And they did that so they could go from uh, four connectors, or well, two connectors down to one. So it was actually cheaper to add an integrated circuit than to have two sets of connectors. And the expense of connectors and gluing things or soldering an SSD directly to the board, that's that's kind of what drives it. Even like screws, screws are expensive. Not, well, the thing that's expensive about the screw is the time to insert it, right, or the labor. <clears throat> Why screw it when you can glue it? So I don't think these companies are the companies aren't maliciously trying to make things harder to repair. They're just trying to make them as cheap as possible. And them not being repairable is a byproduct. And they also want you to just buy new ones while also claiming to be green. Yeah, right. There's only one green Apple cares about, or orange in this case. You were the chosen one, Apple. You were supposed to be a scrappy upstart. My market share has doubled since last we met. So if I had a time machine, I would buy a bunch of cheap DVD players. You know, like $10 DVD players. I guess I could get them at Goodwill or Alibaba. I would buy all those players and go back in time and sell the DVD players in 1998. That's when DVD players were like $400. So it's something you could take back in time and it would be worth more in the past than it is in the present. Then after I make all my profit on my DVD players, because you also have to take into account inflation, because it's been about 52% inflation since 1998. So after I saw the DVD players, then I would buy Apple stock, because in 1998, it was like just 
nothing. It was like a dollar a share. This circuit board is laughably rectangular. Ah, oh, man, I can see, I can see the pixels or see the triads, even without it backlit. Um, LCD appears to be uh, conductive adhesived in place. All right, that's kind of like a TI calculator. Oh, look, you can see the controller chip. It's a lot more obvious on this, although you still have it in modern stuff. It's just usually, well, yeah, you can see them here too. It's usually hidden in the, it's usually hidden in the ribbon cable better. Well, I found the guide online. Uh, yeah, you have to actually remove a whole mess of stuff to make this work. 15 components. So I'll go ahead and do that. Gonna need you to go ahead and come in on Let's just go ahead and get rid of this relic of the past. CFL. Ben, you're a relic of the past. And yet, I'm still here. What's holding that in place? Oh, oh, it's got fuses and a power connector. Why didn't they just use white LEDs? Well, because blue LEDs hadn't been invented yet. I said white LEDs, not blue. <laughs> Slapping sound effect. You fool. White LEDs are oh, blue LEDs. Hello, I'm a YouTube game journalist. I have been around since the olden days, 2006. I'd like to tell you about the best and first game ever made, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare. This was the first video game ever made. Tallest mountain ain't high enough. I want you back, gonna take you prisoner of love. Oh no, a surface mount part. It must be impossible to remove. Oh, it's not impossible to remove. Um, you know, yeah, I I would say it's a more advanced mod. I could see why someone might not be comfortable with it. Like right here, like remove this transistor, but remove the two resistors to the other side of the capacitor and leave the capacitor in place. Even I like bump the capacitor so I'm gonna make reflow it make sure it's straight then I'll hit it with some solder wick just to make sure there's no excess uh, solder in places where it shouldn't be so yeah you know I've seen simpler mods <laughs> hmm interesting we're supposed to remove these resistors and then bridge them with zero ohms should be able to do that with a solder blob oh yeah look at that eh, yeah this is a uh... This is a bit, I mean, this, this mod has some stuff involved with it. And I guess we're supposed to remove this? Oh, it probably wouldn't fit with the screen. Middle plastic screw, oh. All right. It'll never jump again. Oh look, there's some more of that uh, hot melt uh, <laughs> placement. What did we see that on? It was, uh, where's that technology connections? Oh yeah, man, I'm getting confused. I can't separate my life from YouTube. Ah. Highest mountain ain't high enough. I want you back, gonna take you prisoner of love. Oh, I put it in upside down. That's not good. That would make sense because you wouldn't be, oh, they must be rendering the image upside down in the LCD. Oh, silly me. One thing that's different from the uh, instructions is that there's no notches. Um, there were, and the, the old instructions showed notches. <sighs> hmm. Yeah, do I go all the way down till I hit the cartridge slot or, or what? I'm gonna make sure I do this right. The instructions show uh, notches on the edge of the board here and here to line it up with these uh, screw holes, but that's clearly missing. Although if we look at it like this, I mean, it looks like I mean, I can't see the edge of the screen. I'm sure it kind of underscans it anyway. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to double check before I actually... I mean, obviously you're intended to solder this directly here to the ground planes in order to affix it in place. Uh, yeah, but I'm not going to... I'm going to make sure everything's right before I do that. <laughs> Anything worth doing is worth doing right. 0.1 inch to 
the metal can. It's pretty level. And there, and then make sure that it's spaced as correctly as possible in the X axes. I don't know if you can see it, there's a slight bend to the LCD. Like the foam is not quite thick enough. Not sure how I feel about that. Which means I am sure how I feel about that. I think it's a little bit rinky dink, but. Oh, maybe like half a millimeter to the left. <laughs> half a millimeter to the left, he said, using an English dial caliper. I'm not sure if massive solder blobs were the intention, but that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, I guess these are the two main inputs. I don't know why they couldn't get ground through here. I mean, I would bet. I would bet half a month's salary there's ground there. Whatever. Now it says to connect ground and VCC from the mod to ground and VCC on the game gear, but doesn't say where they are. I mean, obviously that's gonna be ground. Well, that's ground, I just gotta find VCC. I mean, like, VCC would probably be on this, no, yeah, because, uh, right. I'll just run ground up here and make this cleaner than a preacher's whistle. You know, a clean as a whistle. Like, how clean would a whistle be? It's filled with, like, snot and other detritus from your mouth. <sighs> yeah, it doesn't tell you what VCC is, but by beeping it out, I mean, you know, here's a RAM chip. There's a capacitor. Here's the power input. There's a big thick trace on the left. That beeps out, so I'm guessing that's it. Jiminy Christmas, six double A's. I'm taking a look at the power board here. There's really nothing coming off of it, beeping it out. I removed uh, two of the capacitors. Um, yeah, here's one of them here. One of the uh, vias looked a little sketchy. I don't think it actually connects to that diode, but it does definitely go over here. Like if I dig my probe in, and dig it in here. You can usually get through the solder mask, but then I don't have a connection there. See that? So I don't know if the capacitor leaked and destroyed that trace, but that might need to be reworked. Ah, I scraped away the solder mask. Uh, can you see? There's actually a separation between the trace and the via. Hmm. Um, maybe that's enough to make it stop working. <laughs> Hmm, there's some suspect smell coming out of that. I emailed the guy back. I'm like, was this thing working when you sent it? <sighs> well, you know, obviously I know what solder and flux smell like. So if I smell, well, usually if there's like a bad cap, it smells kind of like garbage. I found a 1000, which is the closest I have to the squat 820. It'll probably work. I was talking to a friend of mine about some of my convention dreams. And I'm like, you know, I've even had, I've had these dreams where I'll go to like the Midwest Gaming Classic and, you know, it's like they decide to, you know, do the show no matter what and then not enough people show up. So I've had dreams like that. And then I've had dreams in which, like, everything's, you know, resolved. <laughs> And then I go to MGC, and in that dream, I think, oh, I'm glad that people showed up, unlike the dream that I had where <laughs> nobody showed up. And then immediately she asks, are you on Lexapro? And I'm like, how, how do you know that? I'm like, yeah, I take it for anxiety so I don't grind my teeth at night and cause, you know, $50,000 worth of dental work. And she's like... Having meta dreams about dreams is actually a side effect of that drug. And I'm like, oh, my God. But it was so weird. It was like, it, it was like, you know, like, you enjoy Castlevania, don't you? It was like, it was like someone like stepping over your grave. I didn't realize that meta dreams were such a known um, side effect of a certain drug. Uh, OK, so I replaced the caps and then there was one bad trace. Uh, let's see if it makes a difference. Uh, should be three grounds in the middle and then two fives here and then a 34, which I assume is probably for the ball, but I... Well, I'm still not getting power out of this PSU board. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to complete the rest of the mod and then see if I can just power this thing manually with five volts. I made some marks here where the PCB butts up against the screw post. That way the uh, wires that have to go from one side of the board to the other, I'll know where not to thread them. So uh, yeah, let's just wire that up and we'll see where we go. 
I'll try to do a neat and clean job. Looks like I have to attach these wires to some capacitors over here, which is basically hijacking the uh, the face button. So this is probably how it does, you know, like, oh, you know, press these three buttons at once to change scan line mode. I guess that makes sense. Dun, 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 leave Virginia alone. Leave Virginia alone. She's not like you. And me, she's not like you. And me, C36, there it is. Get in my belly, get in my belly, C36. I like to kind of run these wires like traces. I keep them all on the same level, don't uh, stack them atop each other if you can help it. Then once you have them where you'd like a little bit of hot glue, lick your finger, squish it down. That way you can continue working ASAP. Then bend over like that. Different kind of bending over. And you can strip the end or depends on the age and type of wire. Sometimes you can just heat it up and it'll shrink enough. That should work. Oh, I just realized this is not the most recent version of the uh, McWill LCD. I discovered that when I realized there were no backlight pads down here. In fact, that pin is the only backlight. So, hope the instructions were the same. Yeah, I mean, maybe put the version number on your silk screen. Uh, the kit included this 28 gauge .05 inch pitch uh, wire, clearly cut from like a hard drive. Of course, that's where I always get it. Seems like that's a bit coarse for doing this, so I'm going to use this much thinner gauge wire in order to do that. It's also solid strands, so I don't have to worry about whiskers or anything. So apparently we have to have to go six connectors from here to the modded PCB. So here's, well, I guess not how I do it. Here's how I'm going to do it. So if we think about what wires we need, what's the furthest wire, which is probably probably that one. Then we go over to the back, squish it, and oh yeah, that's right, hot glue. Squish that cat. Just squish that cat. Oh, maybe I should put Bud in this video. He's getting bigger, but he still likes to be squished. Well, I don't know if he likes it, but he tolerates it. Then we can take this wire and we can fold it once, twice, three times my circuit. Come on, you knew I was going to say something to that effect. You had to have. <laughs> then we'll take this, we'll just get these splayed. So the one that is to the far right is 57. So, oh man, yeah, this is, uh, I'm gonna get my magnifying glass out. 68, 67, 66, 65, 64, 63, 62, 61, 60, 59, 58, 57. All right, I'll do a black mark on the side of the circuit board. Luckily, the density for this isn't too high. So I'm gonna come over like this. Actually, let me get it like this. I mean, this is how I would do it, I'm sure. I'm sure this is a popular mod. People have probably have their own ways, but here's how I'm gonna tackle it. Little bit of hot glue. Happy little clouds. Now we've been, oh, the furnace turned off. Production values have skyrocketed. <laughs> okay, so now we're gonna bend it up and then there is 57. I'm gonna take my knife, cut it to length. Snippity doo da. Wait, isn't that song from the Disney movie that cannot be mentioned? I heard this um, story that uh, I don't know if it's actually true, but if you work at Disney World and a customer is like, "Where's the churro stand?" You have to point with two fingers. And the reason for that is because. Every picture of Walt Disney, 
he's pointing or has two fingers sticking out. And the reason for that is because he was a chain smoker and it was impossible to photograph him without a cigarette in his hand. But the air brushed out all the cigarettes. So now they have the people point with two fingers to try to explain why Walt is always pointing with two fingers that aren't holding anything. I don't know if that's true or not. I just heard that legend. We'll just wire these up in the most convenient way here and then we'll descramble it on this end. That's why I picked a ribbon cable that had a color band on one end. Because it's only using four bits of data, so does that mean it's, um, was the ASIC clocking all of the data to the LCD? Then why is the ribbon cable so large? How did they accomplish this magic? Who knows? The wonderful world of Disney. All right, there's the connectors on the old ribbon cable header. I just need to wire it up at this end, and then uh, I guess we could, well, the power supply is not working, but I could try attaching five volts manually. I would think it would work. <sighs> PDF, it's got like the pin out for this section and the pin out for the LCD section on two separate pages. It's like, that's not very handy. That's not how the force works. It's like the only line from the sequel trilogy that anyone remembers. You know, the prequels may not have been perfect, but they were infinitely quotable and memeable. And if you don't believe me, well, I have the high ground! All right, that's allegedly the complete mod. The question is now, can I get the game gear to fire up? What is the point of these copper traces? I guess that's where the buttons are. Oh, I think I know. Oh, yeah. It's for these rear supports so that they know that this area is clear when you compress the case against it. You know, so there's no components there. Or they could have just not put any components there. Gonna stick in Sonic, hook this up to my bench supply, just apply 5 volts directly to the... VCC rail, see if it'll turn on. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Garbled screen, that's something. I'm gonna use my scope to see if there's life on Mars. Is there life on Mars? Your baby brother is mine forever. I am not seeing anything. Is this... Well, there's the oscillator. Um, I'm getting a wave on that. Uh, 32 megahertz oscillator frequency. I know that probably sounds like a lot, but what happens is that gets divided down. So the, the pixel clock might, the pixel clock, the sprite clock, etc., might run at 32 megahertz, but then it gets divided down to about four once you get down to the Z80 and the and the RAM. Speaking of which, uh, not seeing any activity. There must be something. There must be some sort of signal that is required from the battery pack, maybe like V-Ref, in order for this thing to actually boot up. I reflowed the power switch, and now it appears to be working. It's kind of weird. The power switch, the on position, is to the left, away from the inside of the unit. That's some weird design language. Anyway, there's 5 volts, and then 34. Uh, speaking of Lewis Rossman, did you ever see that video where he talked about why the, um, <clears throat> the Apple laptops were failing because they had the high voltage LED backlight right next to a data signal. Well, even on the old game gear, look at, there's a gap between the 34 volt signal and the battery signal. Hmm, gee, Sega could do that. Oh yeah, see right here? It's a gap there too, but now trillion dollar Apple can't figure it out because when your customers are cultists, why improve? Okay, will the mod work on the first try? Place your bets. That's a big negatory. Oh, <laughs> you know, if I had a cleaning kit for this cartridge, it would last a hundred years. I've disconnected the LCD mod power supply so it won't draw anything. Uh, let's see if that makes a difference. Maybe there's something that's a funky monkey as far as that's concerned. Funky monkey. Booting up. There's a constant five. Hmm. 
And when the light's on, is there bus activity? There is. Okay, so something about the LCD mod is causing this thing not to power up. Well, at least we're getting close to the issue. I've been probing the uh, video signals um, with it uh, on so the D3 signal. It's a very attenuated signal. It's only about 1.8 volts. Whereas the rest are 5 volt TTL signals as I'd expect. Looks like there's a horizontal sync pulse, frame pulse, and some data. Again, I'm not exactly sure how this works. Magic! Wait, didn't we have those those four resistors we had to bridge? I wonder if that has something to do with it. Because remember that was, um, you know, they're like, oh, remove these four resistors and then bridge them, which was right there. I'm guessing those are the same signals as the digital signals going to the uh, screen. I guess I could beep it out. Yeah, actually, I'm going to beep it out first. So this is the line that appears to be attenuated, D3. Is that even one of these lines? I found a few of them. Four resistors removed and bridged. Four bits of data. And then I've beeped the other ones out. They're all here. So I think the last one would be this one, which I disconnected, but I've got no connection whatsoever. Maybe something broke on that line? And that's why we're seeing, we're seeing like almost like a capacitance signal of it instead of the actual signal. I mean, that would explain a lot. Strangely, I'm not measuring any connection through that wire whatsoever. That's weird. Yeah, it's brand new ribbon cable too that I need to buy more of. Let's see, I, look, I made that connection to 57. All right, now I flip it over. It's gonna strip the end. And I'm guessing this should be one of those bridged resistors. Oh, by the way, it's okay to touch one side of something with your skin as long as you don't touch the other side, in which case it gets contaminated by your body. Dun, 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 dun. Hmm. It's weird. I wonder if there's some sort of trace issue between here and there. Okay, open line, and then we touch, and we get 480 mega ohms. What the F? Well, as you can hear, the Game Gear is definitely running. Something about the screen is causing it to brown out. Strange. You want to see something kind of cute and also pathetic? When I'm in my secret lab, Bud just sits here in his box of garbage and guards the door, don't you, Bud? Oh, look how big you are now. Big bud, look at how big you are. Squish that cat. Just squish that cat. Maybe we'll watch some Star Trek later, okay, bud? Maybe I'll let Bud in here when he's older, but there's just too much stuff for him to destroy, like all these dangling cords. Anyway, I attached a separate five volt supply, bench supply to the screen. Check this out. Switching on console. And then the screen. So it's some sort of power issue. It looks really good. The person who sent this to me said that there were some issues with the uh, power supply, like it doesn't run off battery. So maybe there's, yeah, maybe there's something messed up with that little PSU that's, although I, I can't imagine the screen is really consuming that much power, at least compared to the old one. Why is an external five volts working when the internal five volts doesn't? Well, I mean, I guess the first answer would be there's not enough power, but why not? I'm just gonna double check this brownout issue by applying power to the screen while it's running. Hmm. In that case, the screen turned on. This is back when Sonic only had one friend. I've only got one friend, Tails. Miles. Per hour. Get it? Miles per hour? All right, if I activate the screen, let's see how much current it takes. 500 milliamps? That seems a bit high. 
kind of just taking a halfway break between the project, waiting on some parts. Um, but I thought I would take this opportunity, since apparently people like to listen to me just talk about things while I work. I want to talk about literally and figuratively. Literally, the word, it's being destroyed in our modern language, and it's really pathetic. People use it trying to sound intelligent, but it makes them sound stupid. Apparently this guy wanted a black bezel on this. I guess that'll look cool. Wow, it's literally a different color. Uh, so, yeah, I just wanted to make a video within a video about that word and why people are using it wrong and why uh, and how to use it right. I mean, I would hope my audience is smart enough to know the correct way to use that word. But maybe this video will go viral. It probably won't. So I want to talk about the proper use of the word literally and by extension, figuratively. Now, the reason it's on my mind um, is when I started this project yesterday, that morning I was taking my pills. Um, and I, I never take my pills with water. I guess I should because <laughs> one of the pills went down the wrong hole and it got stuck, I guess, at the top of my esophagus or wh wherever the air goes. And I'm like, <laughs> um, it was, it was fairly unpleasant because it was kind of like, it wasn't really like choking, but I could feel the pill dissolving into the, into the tube leading to my lungs. I was thinking, oh man, that was a hard pill to swallow. Literally. What happened to your voice? Uh, in this morning, there was a hard pill to swallow. Oh, you mean something happened that you had a hard time accepting? Like an increase in your water bill? No, I literally had a hard time swallowing a pill. A pill went down my throat and I had a hard time swallowing it. So that's when you want to use it because, you know, there's all these figures of speech like, you know, he blew his top, climbing up the walls, threw the book at him. I'm sure there's many others I can't think of right now. And those are figures of speech, you know, figuratively. But when you want to use the term literally is when you say something, but you don't want people to misinterpret it as being a figure of speech. So like in my case, I was having a problem with pills. Oh, I got a pill problem, man. I was having a problem with pills. So I want, I would want to differentiate, hey, this is actually what happened. It was, you know, something was hard to swallow, literally. Literally is is the new like, you know, like, oh my God, my, my friend was like, oh, let's go to the mall, blah, blah, blah. Um, you know, basically it's like, it's just like a, a, a superfluous word to throw into a conversation when you don't want to swear. And swearing too is just, um, you know, it's a tacit admission that your vocabulary sucks. But at least with like, if you're like, my friend was like, oh my God. And well, you know, that's, you know, you are saying, okay, my friend was like this. Oh my God. You know, it's like, oh, I just said it like. <laughs> It, it at least isn't grammatically incorrect. It's superfluous, but it's not incorrect. But people always use literally incorrectly. So you should, basically you should almost never use the word literally if you want to use it properly. Another example, let's say there's a defendant in a courtroom and he's being belligerent and he wants to go to trial, even though he's obviously guilty. And when it's all said and done, he's guilty. He wasted the court's time. So the judge is like, I'm going to hit you with the maximum sentence. I'm going to throw the book at you. I'm going to take all the possible things in the book I can charge you with and charge you with them because you wasted everyone's time not taking a plea deal. So that would be figuratively throwing the book at someone. Now, the alternative, let's say it's a courtroom and the... Um, but the defendant is being incredibly unruly and all of a sudden he rushes for the judge and the bailiff can't get there in time. So the judge's only recourse is to pick up a book, throw it at the guy and hit him in the face to slow him down long enough for the bailiff to catch him. So if that was on the news, the news person would be within their rights to say, this judge literally threw the book at this defendant and then they'd show the clip. But that's when you would use it. You don't just use it as a random profanity. I guess it looks kind of cool, except for this, this part's still blue. 
Ooh, it's time for the sexy film reveal. Oh. Now you might be saying, but Ben, I love using the word literally. It's literally the only thing I have to, to look forward to in life. <laughs> well, okay, well maybe, you know, that's fine. But what I would suggest is learn the proper usage of the word. And then when you use it, instead of impressing your dumb redneck friends, you'll actually impress intelligent people because they'll be like, oh, I expected you to use that word incorrectly, but you used it correctly. How would you like a job at my Fortune 500 company? Wow, this D-pad is like hold my beer Xbox 360, terrible. A uh, fun fact, actually having just the cross was actually patented by Nintendo, I think like in 1981 with the Game & Watch and it didn't expire until, well, 27 years, so 2000, Seven, which explains why you saw like the Xbox One controller brought the cross back instead of a circle because it was out of patent. This Game Gear literally takes all the batteries in the world. Really? Does the world only have six batteries? I was at Goodwill looking for weird calculators and I found one, but oh man, it's literally two-faced. Oh, you mean it's duplicitous in its actions and shady and doesn't always tell the truth? No, it literally has two faces. One side is a casino game and the other side is a calculator. I've got a riddle for you. How do you fix one broken game gear? With five broken game gears. I think the power supply unit on the original game gear is bad. So I'm gonna plug this power supply and battery pack into this, into you know our target game gear and see if it makes a difference. And away we go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Bob's your uncle. It's fixed, unbelievable. Wallaby dingo bunyips. A whole new Game Gear, do 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 do. A new fantastic way to play. We'll take it anywhere. Batteries bring spares. Let me share this whole new Game Gear with you. Do 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 do. Unbelievably bad battery life. Indescribably large. It won't fit in your pocket, so just hock it. If you get bored, a brand new Game Gear. <laughs> I should stop now. You can kind of see how low resolution the Game Gear was when you look at it like this. Oh yes, make those four square wave sound channels sing. It's kind of a weird first stage. Look, there's too many ways to die. Or I just suck, probably a combination of both. Well, there you have it. The McWill Game Gear LCD replacement mod. It has very good results. I noticed the pixel scaling isn't perfect. I don't know if you can see it if I zoom in there, but uh, like if you look at the word hedgehog, you can see that some of the pixels or the uh, stroke whiffs are different on the text. Uh, but still, it's it's still a pretty cool mod. It fits the entire, uh, you know, opening of the screen. And yeah, I would say it's not the easiest thing to install. I mean, it's easy for me, but I would say it's probably uh, intermediate skill level, mostly because of the uh, thin wires you have to connect where the old ribbon cable was. And they include, again, they include like the 26... I think it's 28 gauge wire and it's not really stranded wire is not really appropriate for you know soldering something that small well if you have any mods you need done or broken rare game consoles send them my way